PGA Tour Champions Learning Center. Brought to you by Tour Edge Exotics. Hello and welcome to Learning Center. I'm Vince Cellini and it's an exciting week because the PGA Tour returns with the Charles Schwab Challenge in Fort Worth at Historic Colonial. And one of the players getting ready to play there is Mr. Olin Brown. Olin, what's going on, man? Hey, Vince. Great to be with you this morning. Uh, looking forward to having a visit. I am too, and uh, you're exempt to play there. I said you were a past champion, a champion before 2000, 1999 to be exact. And uh, ordinarily, OB, this would conflict with the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship on the Champions Tour, but we know that Champions Tour won't kick back in until late July. So in terms of getting back to play, this is enormous in terms of its scope and just getting golf back to play. How do you kind of deal with Everything that's going on, the return to golf, you going back as a past champion, and just getting the sport back on its feet in this current place and time and, and focus on the task at hand. Strange days we're in. Um, nothing like this has ever happened in, in our generation. I mean, I, I suppose if you want to draw a parallel, you go back to the flu pandemic of 17 and 18. Um, but Certainly, I don't think anybody really knows what to expect. I think we're all just going to try and see how things go. And the first event, two, three, whatever, are going to give us an indication of what's going to be happening going forward. And hopefully, hopefully we can resume some kind of, uh, you know, normal function. Did you feel that it was important for you to be at this event? Because you're going back to Colonial for the first time since 2014. And it's... Uh... It's history, I would think. There's a little bit of history involved here overall. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's – I'm just grateful that, uh, that, I can, that I'm eligible to play. And um, I, I haven't played a tournament round since M March 3rd and wouldn't play until, I guess, the first – when you say end of July, yeah, 31st of July is the first tournament day yeah. up at Allies. So, I mean, that's an awful long stretch without any golf. So I'm just excited to be going back to Colonial, first of all, because I love Colonial, but secondly, because it's something to do. What about the overall message golf has been giving to society in terms of getting back to some state of normalcy? Uh, well, I think all the sports are trying to do it, and golf is no different in that regard. Um, I think there's some sentiment uh, around that golf is an outdoor sport, and the social distancing concept can be managed to some extent. We're going to play the first four, four reportedly events without fans, so that's going to reduce contact with people and and uh, there's some indication that uh, that being outside and exposure to the sun may have an impact on the virus and, and uh, be a little bit more protective or uh, the virus may be less transmissible. I don't think anybody really knows. And we're just going to have to go with it. I just did my first COVID test uh, to ensure that, you know, I'm healthy to travel and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to be tested daily uh, or early in the week and then temperature check daily and so forth. So, I, you know, like I said, we're all we're all uh, flying by the seat of our pants here. We're just going to the first week and for sure is going to be, you know, an eye opener for a lot of us. Yeah. And you mentioned getting tested and then some of the procedures, the protocols that will take place at this tournament. What is that going to be like? What are you hearing about the procedures uh, leading up to playing? Well, I mean, there, there, there is a protocol, and I think we're just going to have to go through it. Um, I'm going to get there Sunday, and so I'll get my first test, I guess, Monday morning. And uh, hopefully it'll be negative, and I'll be able to play in the tournament. Because if it's not negative, then I'm going to be locked in a room somewhere for two weeks, and we're going to go from there. But I, we're just going to have to play it all by ear. I don't think anybody really knows what to expect. But we're all certainly hoping for the best. No, we certainly are. So why don't we talk a little bit about competition and golf here. And uh, with the return of the PGA Tour... Colonial is really buzzing, maybe unlike at any time since maybe Annika played back in, in 2003, uh, scheduled to appear, the top five players in the world, guys like yourself, other guys from the Champions Tour, Schwab Cup winners, McCarron, Langer, Tom Lehman's going to be there. So when you're in a field like this, and it was interesting to me to think about it, you're almost a subset of players as the PGA Tour Champions players. Are you guys like a conference representation in, in college football? Are you guys like the, the SEC or the Pac-12? I mean, how, how does that go? Well, I know I know that they, they <laughs> kind of – I mean, we're going to be sequestered. We're, we're going to be in, in our own little quarantine because they're going to pair all of us together anyway. So we're not going to be playing with anybody that we don't play with on a <laughs> weekly basis anyway. At least that's the way they've done it in the past. Um, 
But, you know, look, everybody who's won that tournament uh, feels a special place uh, in his heart. Um, And it's, you know, widely recognized as Hogan's turf. You know, he won it five times there. It's, you know, it's Hogan's alley. And I know Riviera's got the same moniker, but and that's just a testament to how good Ben Hogan was that there are two Hogan's alleys, right? (laughs) <laughs> and, and you could actually make the case for three with the sixth hole at Carnoustie. Carnoustie. Having said that, you know, there's a statue of Ben Hogan that's prominent and way oversized. And everybody has had his photograph taken with it. There's the Hogan room. It's it's the whole thing is a memorial to his competition and his accomplishment and his, you know, depth of character and his fortitude and his commitment and his resurgence after the terrible, terrible car crash. And, you know, he's got to certainly be on a lot of people's Mount Rushmore in golf. So to be able to go there and play and to have my name on that wall with all those great champions, I mean, it's pretty special. I would think so. I mean, I consider him the father of modern golf, uh, the the golf that we see today on tour. Um, Jim Furyk had a 50th birthday back in May. Phil Mickelson's going to celebrate one uh, this month. So, this old PGA Tour champion is getting a little tougher now, huh? With these guys maybe coming aboard and making some appearances. What are your thoughts on these guys joining up? I mean, it's been tough anyway. And <laughs> it is going to get tougher. And we hope we see those guys out, out there because, uh, you know, the, they're big names in a big era. And, I mean, look what just happened just last week. I mean, it's, it's barely 10 days ago with the match with Phil and Tiger and, and uh, Tom Brady and Peyton. I mean, what a respite that was from all the stuff that's that's that was going on up until then. And uh, what a great production and entertainment value that that thing had last week. So um, to have guys like that that carry that kind of cachet and can displace that kind of water, it's great for golf. Great for the Champions Tour. It is. Major champions joining it. So you're right. It's tough already. It's just getting tougher all the time. So, uh, OB, I understand that there was a stretch there where you didn't – Touch a golf club for like seven weeks. Uh, you know, you just took some time I picked off. Up a, I picked the club. The last day I had a club in my hands was March 4th. And then the first day I had a club in my hands was uh, Tuesday of last week. Wow. So what was step one to get yourself ready to play practice-wise? Uh, I just went out and chipped and putted for a while. Right. And, um, you know, uh, there's <laughs> there hasn't been any rush, you know, until, until Colonial came into focus. And... You know, I'm dealing with little nagging injuries and stuff like that. So it's good to get a little bit of a rest and try and heal up from that. And, um, you know, my my plan has been thrown askew because we had just May is the driest month in the state of Florida uh, annually and historically. And since Saturday before the match, which is now, what, 11 days, we've had 40 inches of rain at the club. And the last time that we had anything approaching that, and we didn't, was maybe in the 20s during a tropical depression or a hurricane. So our course medalist is absolutely flooded out. Uh, Mm. Greens are submerged, fairways are entirely submerged, or greens are island greens and fairways are submerged. And so my preparation has taken a hit. It's not like I'm the best guy at preparation anyway. I mean, (laughs) preparation is like homework to me. So, But (laughs) we'll see, you know, we'll see. Uh, At age 61... And having this time off. Uh, Thanks for the reminder. Hey, man, I'm I'm <laughs> there too. So, you know, we're right in the same boat, pal. Wow. Um, what has this been like in, in terms of your either missing golf or helping you get some perspective on it being taken away for a little while? Yeah, there's both, right? Um, I think, I, I don't know about other guys, but I think we all share some kind of a uh, – you know, a, a bipolar relationship with the game. We all love it and hate it at the same time. I, I really do um, love the game. And I have great admiration for guys like VJ and Tom Kite who are out there. I mean, Tom Kite's going to be 70 if he's not already. And he's on the range and he thinks he's getting he's getting uh, rounding the edges so he can get even better and be more competitive. I mean, that's an extraordinary approach at that age. Um, and the level of commitment. And it's I think it's indicative of the, of the kind of you know, the, the personality trait or the quality that an individual has to have to have the kind of longevity that it takes. I mean, he was a stud junior golfer. He was a stud in college. 
and he had a you know a 30 year career on the PGA Tour, and now he's had a almost 20 year career, if not 20 years, on the PGA Tour champions. Mm -hmm. That's just unfathomable to me. And and the guy's commitment to his craft. Um, you know, there are occasional snickers about a guy. Hey, man, he's out there beating balls again or whatever. And I remember my first year on the Champions Tour, one of my buddies came up to me and said, you're going to love it out here. You know, nobody really practices. Everybody just kind of hangs out. We play the pro-am. Then we go to the, we go in and have a couple of cold ones. And, and I'm looking down at the end of the range. And I'm watching Tom Kite. And this is at the age of 60 at that point, pounding balls. And I looked at him. I go, I mean, I don't see what you're seeing. And you know what? That guy's gone. Tom Kite's still out there. So that says everything you need to know about a guy like that. No, it absolutely does. I mean, you look at the work ethic of Bernhard Langer. You look at uh, occasional appearance by Hale Irwin. Hale's still out there, and, you know, he's... And Hale's he's 70 now. Yeah. It's shocking, you know, their commitment. And that's what made them great, and that's why they're in the Hall of Fame, because any time that you want to accomplish something, you have to be immersed. You have to commit yourself to it, and you have to be kind of uh, tunnel-visioned about it. Right. Um, and, you know, the people, I think there's something to be said about people who don't recognize that, and they tend to kind of ridicule it a little bit, but there's a, there's a reason that those that those guys are different than everybody else. Their level of commitment is greater than the rest of us. No, I think it's admirable. All right, let's get to uh, what's your edge presented by Tour Edge Exotics, and as a uh, past champion at Colonial, uh, tell us what maybe a a key shot you have to have in order to be successful there and to win. It's a, it's an old fashioned course. You got to shape shots you know, tight fairways. So so what is an approach there that you have to have? You can't just bomb and gouge like, uh, you know, most courses. Well, I mean, if you have that, if you have that um, arrow in your quiver, it certainly helps because you're able to cut a few corners. Um, and with the equipment technology, the scoring at Colonial changed. So I won in 1999 at eight under par. And I think Tom Watson was the year before me at, I can't remember what it was, 11 under maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but then when, when the ball started flying and the equipment started uh, helping the ball um, stay in the air longer, all of a sudden a hole like number four, for example, which was always a three wood, try and cut, cut it around or draw it around the corner and leave yourself a four or five iron into the green. Now guys are taking the bunker that was about a 285 carry and hitting wedges. And that was the first time that that kind of thing occurred. But I, I, I would say overall at Colonial, you can't play there unless you know how to manage the wind. So I don't know what it's going to be like in June because it's a, about a month later than it has customarily been. But in May, we could get days with three, four clubs of wind, five clubs of wind on a really strong day. And so if you, I guess the primary consideration when you're playing in the wind is you've got to make really good contact and you've got to make consistent contact because you can't control your ball flight, you can't control your spin without those things. So playing in the wind is, is to my mind, uh, a really key factor in playing well at Colonial. Good stuff. Uh, so looking ahead to PGA Tour champions, we talked about the schedule resuming with the Allied Challenge. And you're a guy that's played at least 23 events since uh, 2014. First, uh, when we get back and get rolling here, it's going to be like 13 events in 15 weeks. How, how much are you planning to be in that mix? What, what's, what's your game plan? Uh, well, God willing and health willing, I'm going to try and play, you know, um, Great. it's so important. It's, it's such an abbreviated season, uh, and truncated in every way. I mean, we're going to be with our hair on fire going week to week with all the testing and all the stuff that we're going to have to make an accommodation, uh, toward, we just have to be ready for the long haul. Now there are going to be some weeks where guys are totally gassed and they're going to have to take, take that week. Um, but as a general, as a general consideration, uh, you know, I think everybody's going to try and play as much as possible simply because you can't spread it out over all that time. And look, there's a lot at stake anyway, even though we're, we're rolling this season into next and the two seasons are going to now end up being around a 40 week, a 44 week season. Um, it's still, it's still golf. And you know what, at this level, it's not, we're not 25 years old where we can say, you know what, I can, I can cash this year or save this year and be ready for next year. It doesn't work that way. You know, our window is closing. So I think a lot of guys are going to be very interested in playing. Now, I think a lot of people are worried about travel, health. Um, what happens if we get, you know, an uptick in what's in, in, in the COVID um, virus. Um, because you guys are in that vulnerable, we're all in that vulnerable category. 
uh, you know. I, you, you have to say because of our age. On yeah. the other hand, as a general rule, guys are in pretty decent shape, too. I mean, of course. Um, uh, outside all the time, working of out, um, e- eating. I, I need to get back. I need to get back to work so I can stop eating, actually. That, that's the key. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm on the verge of having an underlying condition at the moment. Uh, my, my underlying condition is my belt loops aren't right anymore. So I don't, I don't know what. We're just going to have to figure out what to expect. We're going to have to figure it out as we go. We will. Uh, finally, we're in about a five-month span here without golf on PGA Tour champions. And that means that uh, the loopers on that circuit are also out of work as well. So enter caddies for a cause which I know you know all about supporting those guys um, during this time off because of the pandemic. There's an auction going on right now and through the 21st at thegolfauction.com where you have some great items where you can help the guys who need it. And uh, you have a great guy in the bag in Sandy Armour. I like Sandy. Uh, I enjoy spending good as time they with get. him. Yep. Yeah. So my, my first question is, is he going to be on the bag for you at Colonial, which I assume he is? And then Really, the contributions made by by this organization to, to help some of these guys who are in need. Yeah, Sandy's a great man. He is going to be there, and we're both looking forward to getting back to work. And as for caddies with a cause, I mean, everybody everybody's struggling right now, and everybody needs a, a little help. I mean, local local community where I live in Jupiter Tequesta area, we got restaurants that may not come back, and there are small businesses that that may not come back and so we're all doing what we can at every level to try and you know help out any way we can and i mean not to touch on a on a really difficult subject but i mean what we're seeing going on city to city in this country right now there there are businesses that are that are not only have they suffered from this covid thing but they're now suffering because of because of uh social upheaval and and civil unrest and so um it's hard to get your mind wrapped around all this stuff. It's like a perfect storm of struggle and and misery right now. And we, we've got to fight through that and get past it. And we've got to we've got to get back to doing stuff that makes everybody whole again. Well said. And Olin, before I let you go, is there any chance that you may one day run for public office? Not a chance, bro. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No way. I'm not qualified in the first place. In the second place. In the second place, I like being I like being private. You know, I like yeah. being away and getting away and going out on the water and you know leaving the phone. It just it's too hard. Oh, all right. Well, listen. Thank you for your time. Can't wait to see you play. 